college Democrats are grappling with accusations of bigotry within its leadership, and uh, they're basing these worries on statements that were made when the alleged offenders were as young as 13 years old. So let me just get this one thing out of the way. Um, I disagree with going back and, and looking into what adolescents have said and then judging who they are as adults based on that. I think that as adolescents, uh, we're not fully formed yet. Our brains are not fully formed yet. And people say stupid things when they're teenagers, okay? Not all the time, but sometimes they do. I just wanna get that out of the way because I think this entire story is pretty absurd. So the controversy actually began in September when Tasneem uh, Ahmad Al-Michael, um, a Muslim and a former vice president of the College Democrats of America, abruptly uh, ended his presidential campaign after a 2014 tweet in which he used a racial slur resurfaced. Now, I don't know what the racial slur is. Politico didn't get into specifics about that. Um, but Al Michael says that he has changed since he was a teenager. He said this, uh, what I said as a 15 year old prior to being in politics was ignorant, inappropriate and flat out wrong. It doesn't define me, my character, my character or invalidate the work that I continue to do. And by the way, not only do we not know what the, uh, the racial slur was, uh, we don't even know the context in which he said it. So we really don't know much about what he said. The only thing we know is that he said something that some people in the uh, college Democrats didn't like, and uh, he said it when he was 15 years old. But by the way, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's more. Uh, Cenk, did you want to jump in? Yeah, look, guys, there's, this story uh, could be considered uh, an example of woke uh, uh, culture, cancel culture, et cetera. But I actually think this is a little bit of an old school story where uh, if you're a Muslim uh, and if you uh, are in favor of Palestinian rights, they're going to find a way to eliminate you. And that that's what College Democrats of America seem to be doing. Uh, so let Anna give you more of the details because your next target, you're going to be shocked to find out, was also Muslim. So after that controversy, um, Politico writes that new president and vice presidential candidates uh, subsequently emerged, including uh, Noran uh, Mezba, who is Muslim and was serving as the CDA's, College Democrats of America's, uh, Director of Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Access, uh, short uh, is IDEA. Now, uh, in 2016, apparently, she had uh, tweeted something in regard to the Israeli government. Uh, she's also been an activist for Palestinian rights. But this 2016 tweet apparently uh, offended some members of their ranks, right? So a 13-year-old at the time, she wrote, quote, I blame this debate on the Yahud. And she's speaking about the debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. But Yahud is an Arabic word which is sometimes used as a slur against Jewish people. She also tagged another user with a history of anti-Semitic tweets. Again, there are really no specifics. Um, I, I don't know who she who she tagged. Uh, she was 13 at the time. And uh, apparently Yahud is uh, sometimes used as a slur against Jewish people. Um, but Mespa still narrowly won the election um, to be vice president, okay, of the college Democrats. Uh, but she released a statement after that, after she won narrowly, saying, I apologize for my words in 2016. My comment was in no way rooted in malice or anti-Semitism, especially as a 13-year-old, relatively new immigrant from North Africa with a different regional dialectic linguist comprehension. While I take responsibility for my actions, I am hurt by the Islamophobia and xenophobia that continues to unfold. And by the way, after she released that statement, the college Democrats uh, voted to essentially censure her. Uh, the CDA board also passed a resolution, 19 to three, so overwhelming majority, uh, censuring her and requiring her to undergo training about anti-Semitism and cultural sensitivity from the Anti-Defamation League, the American Jewish Committee, and the US Holocaust Memorial Museum. Uh, but she uh, did not do that. Uh, she did not do the sensitivity training. And so uh, 
turns out that members of the College Democrats decided to uh, pressure her to resign, to step down. Um, now there's actually impeachment proceedings happening against her. On November 12th, um, her successor as the IDEA director, uh, Jeremy Ward, released a report calling for her to resign as vice president due to the harm caused uh, to two different communities. Ward had initially announced the independent investigation into her conduct in September, um, circulated internally on November 10th. It concluded that Mesba's past tweet was anti-Semitic and that her claims of Islamophobia were unfounded. It also included a new accusation that she had exhibited, quote, a pattern of discrimination against members of the black community, specifically black women. Yeah. But there, there were no specifics, okay? So Ward wrote that the report did not disclose any specific instances of anti-blackness behavior so as to ensure that those who had complained would not face retribution or harassment. I, 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 Absurd. I, I think this is insane. Like, you can't accuse someone of being racist and be like, no, no, people told me that you're racist, but I'm not gonna get into specifics. No, that's now, a serious accusation. Now, look, this is total insanity. They accuse her of being against black women. She's a woman from North Africa. Now, nah, this is so dumb. It's so dumb. But guys, this is, I'm telling you, I don't know if you disagree, Anna, but this is not about woke culture. This is very classic establishment Democrats using identity politics in a way that is very similar to the right wing. The right wing says, oh, like right now, <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, the head of the American Conservative Union, that's the biggest conservative conference, is trying to get Sesame Street canceled, uh, have them taken off the air because they now have an Asian Muppet. Like no holds barred, nothing. Just we hate these people and we don't want them represented. It's unbelievable. So that's Republican version of identity politics. The Democratic version is, uh, well, we don't like you for a completely different reason, So, but we'll pretend that you're against black women, in, even though you're from Africa and you're a woman, right? So, and, and it doesn't have, it doesn't matter. They've accused me of being anti-Muslim, even though my family's Muslim. They've accused Bernie Sanders of being anti-Semitic, even though he's Jewish, that, because that's what establishment Democrats do. They weaponize identity politics in a different way than the Republicans do, but they still weaponize it, right? And so, into the substance of this, the, the charges here. Look, if she had said that tweet, I'd hear out the context, et cetera, but just on the tweet alone, if she said that as a grown up or she said it last week, I'd say, whoa, 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 whoa. That, that does sound a little anti Semitic to me. And I, I would have some trouble with that. And we would have to t talk that through and see if she really means it, and, and et cetera, right? Because you don't want people that are have opinions that are in any way racial. Uh, bigot, bigoted, et cetera, to be in a position of power, especially if you're on the left, right? But she said it when she was 13. Not, come, they, look, they make the left wing look ridiculous yes. when they try to hold people accountable for what they said when they were 13. It's and absurd. Jane Cenk, I, I know what you're referring to, right, uh, in regard to old school Democrat strategy uh, involving identity politics or race, they weaponize it, right? Like they love to weaponize it. I mean, it happened to you when you were running for Congress. They love to weaponize identity-based issues against their opponents. And by the way, it's not just Republican opponents, they're very much willing to uh, weaponize race-related issues or identity-related issues against those who are further on the left. Now, I don't know anything else about this woman all I know is that she made a, a comment, a tweet when she was 13 years old. But I just want everyone to take a moment and think about who they were as an adolescent and who you are as an adult. I mean, even from 13 to 21, you change so much. And I think that it's really, really important to create uh, an environment that is accepting of people who are ready and willing to evolve, who have shown that they've evolved. I think that you know Democrats do themselves a massive disservice by being the scold party, where you're just constantly like trying to dig up trash on people from even from when they were teenagers and use that against them either politically. In this case, it, you know it's being used against this woman politically. 
like give people a shot to show whether or not they've changed. You get what I'm saying? Like what, what we keep seeing over and over again. I mean, we we saw it happen with the uh, editor of Teen Vogue, like bringing up her comments from when she was a teenager to then get her fired from her new position. It's, it's that ain't it. That ain't it. it it's yeah, not it, accomplishing it, anything. Yeah, and, and look, keep it real as to why they are actually objecting to her because of she, what she said it when she was 13. No way. <laughs> Have you ever met a 13 year old? They have no ability to control what they're saying. You're crazy. Nobody thinks a 13 year old uh, version of, of that person is the real version as an adult. That, that many years like that, no, no one believes that. It's a total lie by these guys. And, and why are they targeting her? Because she's for Palestinian rights. It's super obvious. Yeah, if let me get to that. For Palestinian rights, that's why they're coming to get you. Everybody you're knows right. that. So let's and get so, into that. Yeah, yeah, I wanted right, to give the right. specifics on that. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sure the audience is wondering, why does Jenk think that? And it's because she does have a history of um, activism for Palestinian rights. Um, and by the way, college Democrats are split over this. In fact, Justin Hartley, who is the president of the Tulane College Democrats, says elements within our organization are bitter about an election they lost. Elements within our organization do not want to see a young Muslim woman represent Democrats nationally. Mespa, by the way, said that she uh, had been held to a double standard solely because of the way I look, the faith that I practice. Uh, as evidence of that, she also said a member of the College Democrats called her a terrorist supporter last spring because of her strong pro-Palestinian views. She also says, quote, everything I say is torn to shreds. I can't just make a tweet about pop culture without it being ripped apart for underlying messages and hidden meanings. And I mean, we see that on social media all day, every day. It's just that usually it's in regard to adults who make statements while they're adults. So, guys, the Democratic Party has a history of doing this. I, I would be really surprised if it was the college students themselves that are engaging in this sort of insane smear tactics. I, I, I'd bet any amount of money that it's some uh, grown-up Democratic consultant that's trying to bury MESPA. Okay, and so uh, in in 2016 there was a fight over the Democratic Party platform. Uh, all that Bernie Sanders wanted to do, remember, the most successful Jewish candidate in American history, was to help with Palestinian rights. And to, he was arguing for a two-state solution, nothing radical at all, right? And they came in and accused him and everyone else involved of being anti-Semitic. They brought in African-American uh, surrogates to claim that they were offended on behalf of Israel. It's just all this garbage, garbage by the Democrats. Uh, so... It, they've done it a thousand times over. They're now doing it to kids. Uh, that's the establishment Democratic class. And look, guys, are we biased? Like, for example, I, I'm from a Muslim background. So does, does that mean I'm biased in, fire, in favor of Mesba? No, I think that her tweet back when she was an infant was not what I would support, right? That, I think that tweet is wrong. Alexi McCann, uh, the Teen Vogue editor that uh, Anna referred to, she had a tweet that was clearly against Asians, that if she was a grown up, I would hate my wife and my kids are Asian, right? But she did it when she was 17. Now, the progressive position is supposed to be that people under 18 shouldn't even be tried as adults for actual crimes where people are hurt, right? Now they're saying, nope, we're, we're, we, we're gonna try you and end your career, however, 10 years, 20, 30, 40 years later, for something you said when you were a zygote. Get out of here, it's all lies. It's for their own agenda.